Okay, I'm posting this the same day as the other one because I accidentally just paused that recording. That's fun. And I don't want to re-record those 18 minutes, so I'm just going to hide this keyboard away from me so I don't accidentally press the space button again. And continue. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. Hope you watched part one of this first, I guess. Anyways, continuing with his realisticness, again we get to see some arrogance, perhaps, and we also get to see a lot of character development, because at first, like I said, he's quite arrogant, and he betrays Jaren like a billion times, but eventually he becomes much more loyal. So that's that for Rodin. Now let's move on to Jason. Uh, from Percy Jackson, uh, specifically the Heroes of Olympus and the Trials of Apollo series. Let's begin with importance to the story. Now obviously, Jason is not in the original Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, and he is introduced in book one of the Heroes of Olympus, The Lost Hero. In this book, he has lost his memories, but he's a very strange person, which we later find out is because he's actually from the Roman demigod camp, which no one in the Greek side knew about, um, called um, Camp Jupiter. So he comes to Camp Half-Blood with uh, Piper, the girl who is believed to be his girlfriend, but in truth, that was just implanted memories from Hera, uh, the stupid goddess who caused the whole series. <laughs> we all hate her. Anyways, moving on. Um, and he is implanted in his head, but eventually becomes truly best friend, Leo. Um... So they go to Camp Half-Blood, they meet Annabeth and several other people um, from the camp, and they go on to try to figure out Jason and to also begin some quests, uh, with a specific quest that will help with the war against... <sighs> okay. I don't know how to pronounce this name. I always pronounce it in my head, Gaia. But I, that's probably not how you pronounce it, so I'm gonna go to Google Translate. And... I'm just gonna translate... Well, I'm just gonna go... Come on. Please. Gear. Gear? Gear. Gear. Did I spell that right? How do you pronounce this word? Yeah, it's Gia. Huh. I always pronounce it Gaia, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> <coughs> Probably no one else did. So that's fun. Anyways, so, Gia, uh, so against the war against Gia, um, <laughs> and, yeah. He's not really in the second book until, like, the very end, because if this one's focused on Percy, Frank, and Hazel, um, in Camp Jupiter, uh, which they were all looking for, specifically Annabeth was looking for Percy throughout Lost Hero, and turns out he was at Camp Jupiter. It was a swap. Um, one second. My headphones have gone all tangled.
Sorry about that. And I just clipped. Wow. Good days. Good days. Okay. Anyways. So, yeah. He's not really in The Son of Neptune very much. Mostly because it was a Percy-centered book. He is, however, in Mark of Athena and The House of Hades and The Blood of Olympus. Now, Mark of Athena... He was a part of the vision that Piper saw, and there were a couple of other things, but overall, I don't think he had the biggest amount of importance. I mean, he was important, but I don't know. I don't really remember a lot of the other storylines in Mark of Athena besides Annabeth's, to be honest. I liked the book a lot, but I only really remember Annabeth's side of it, and of course, the ending. And House of Hades, this is when I really started to like him. Now, if you watched my Percy Jackson the 7 plus Nico ranking video, you'll notice that Jason is at the bottom, but that doesn't mean he's not my one of my favorite characters in the series. I mean, he's not one of my favorite characters in the series, but I, I do like him. He's just at the bottom of the 7. Um, and he would have been above Frank if... This was purely based on my personal preference. But he wasn't. So, yeah. <clears throat> but this this is the book where I really started to like Jason. Specifically with the whole Nico situation. Um, with Cupid um, and all of that. Uh, and I just love to see Jason being a supportive person. And that's great. And he was definitely very helpful to people in this book, and he was very kind, and he, he was he turned into much more of a charismatic person in this book, and you really got to see more of who he is, and that was great. Um, and of course, Blood of Olympus, he's a part of that. Yep. Indeed. Um, and, let's see... In Trials of Apollo, he only appears in Book 3. We find out that him and Piper have broken up. Um, this is assumed to be because, at least from the knowledge that I have at this moment, it's because of the implanted memories from Hera, but I have a feeling there's probably more to it. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. <sighs> Anyways, so... Throughout that book, he helps guide Apollo, or Lester, or whatever, um, to go up against this latest Roman emperor, emperor, and in a final sacrificing move, Jason dies in order for the others to escape. Rest in peace, Jason. I did cry. A lot. And I was at the chiropractor's office. <laughs> I already had it spoiled for me, but I still cried. <laughs> at the chiropractor! <laughs> While my mother was getting an adjustment and I was waiting for mine, I read this section and I cried. <laughs> at a chiropractor appointment. <laughs> oh dear. Anyways. And, of course, his friends, for the rest of the book, grieve, and I assume there will at least be some more grieving in book four. But I don't know. But I hope so. Because all of these teenagers need therapy. <laughs> I mean, like, everyone needs therapy, but these teenagers especially need therapy. I feel so bad for them. All of the time. <sighs> But yeah, anyways, moving on to relationship with the main character. I know technically Jason is a main character in Heroes of Olympus, but for ease of main character defining, I'm going to say that up until Blood of Olympus, Percy's the main character. Um, Blood of Olympus... I'm not going to count, because I don't think there really is a main character in Blood of Olympus. Because um, it kind of feels like the end of House of Hades was kind of like our goodbye 
to Percy and Annabeth. Um, but, um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm not going to say that there's really an actual main character of Blood of Olympus. So I'll count this as the first four books of uh, Heroes of Olympus, and I'll also count book three of Trials of Apollo, counting Apollo as the main character, because, well, he is. As lesser, sure, but he is. Anyways, so, as for his relationship with Percy, there's definitely rivalry there. While they are friends, there's a big rivalry there. And there were a couple of moments, I don't remember which book it was, I'm... I'm almost certain it was Mark of Athena, because what other book would it be? Because the other ones were focusing on each other, uh, one was focusing on Jason, one was focusing on Percy, and then they all came together in Mark of Athena, and then they were split up again in House of Hades. They obviously couldn't have been with Percy in House of Hades, because, well, Percy was in literal heck, basically. I don't know why I said heck, he's in basically literal hell. Uh... <laughs> He is in Tartarus, uh, which I guess is not actually, like, literal hell, or whatever. I guess that's technically the Fields of Punishment. It's like Monster. <laughs> it, it's Tartarus. It's it's Tartarus. That's He was in Tartarus. Anyways. Uh, so, I'm pretty sure it was in Mark of Athena. The rivalry kind of came to a peak in, like, this one moment that was kind of weird to read. I don't know why. They were like... I could kill you if I wanted to. I could kill you if I wanted to. I could totally beat you in a battle. No, I could totally beat you in a battle. It was weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying. Some people might have liked it, but I, I just was weirded out. <laughs> I don't even know. But anyways, yeah. He has a big rivalry with Percy, but also a friendship. And as for Apollo, I think he's basically just annoyed at him the entire time. <laughs> Which I don't blame him. So, not the best relationship with Apollo, but a decent friendship with Percy. Yeah. And as for realisticness, I'm actually going to give him kind of a low score on this one. While he is realistic in some things, and there are some things that you can relate to, like his being a charismatic person, a supportive person, um, a leader, um, and, of course, though a lot of people most of which who aren't alive anymore could, most of people who are alive probably couldn't relate to the, you know, sacrificing yourself thing. I mean, some that are alive could, and thank you for that, people who have done that, because you are absolutely amazing. Um, specifically talking about military police who have specifically, like, firefighters, military, who have risked their lives for other people, so thank you for that. Um, yeah. Well, a lot of people who are alive could not relate to that part, there are some pretty realistic, or at least good things about his personality. However, in a lot of the books, he just... I didn't really connect with Jason a lot. He was just kind of there, and I like him, but at the same time, I can't really relate to him that much. So that's that. Anyways, we are now going to move on to the comparing. Again, I'm sorry that this has to be a two-parter, because I accidentally pressed a spacebar, and I didn't want to re-record 18 minutes, so yeah, <laughs> we're doing this. Alright, comparison time. Yes. Okay. I don't know what that was, but you know what? We're just gonna roll with it. Okay. So, importance to the story: Rodin or Jason? I'm going to say uh, probably Rodin because he was in all of the books of the series in which he appears, whereas Jason is not. He is not in the first two books of Trials of Apollo or in any of the Percy Jackson and the Olympians books. However, he is in Heroes of Olympus, all of the books. But, I also feel like Rodin was just more important to the, like, actual story. I don't think Jason was 
really the most important in the end out of the seven. Uh, that turned out to be ones like Percy and Annabeth and Leo. Um, those three were kind of the most important, uh, the ones that affected things the most. But yeah. So I'm going to give Rodin the importance to the story point. As for a relationship with the main character, I am again going to give this to Rodin because I feel like he had a lot of growth in his relationship with uh, Jaren. Whereas Jason, I felt like, didn't have a lot of growth with his relationship with main characters. As for realisticness, uh, I'm going to give this one to Jason, actually. Um, because I feel like... He's just more of a relatable character, even if I don't relate to him a lot myself. And my own personal preference is again going to go to Rodin, uh, which leaves us with three points for Rodin and one point for Jason, which means that for the final part of the first round of the side character tournament, the winner is Rodin. Okay, so I'm going to write that down now. We have our winner, Rodin. And let me read you off the next four rounds, uh, which will also be the next four videos for this channel. And I will explain the next four videos for my other two channels. Okay, uh, so next video will be Lin Song from Keeper of the Lost Cities versus Dex Disney from Keeper of the Lost Cities. The next video after that will be Annabeth Chase from Percy Jackson and the Olympians and the Heroes of Olympus versus Bianca Vacker from Keeper of the Lost Cities. Next video will be Keith Sensen from Keeper of the Lost Cities versus Hermione Granger from Harry Potter. And the fourth video will be Halt from Ranger's Apprentice, uh, the early years and Royal Ranger, uh, versus Rodin from The Ascendants. Uh, yeah, so as for my other two channels, um, uh, by the time this gets posted, um, no other video should have gone up for Keeper of the Movies, but two other videos should have gone up by this point, for Keeper of the Games, so I'll just skip over those two, because they'll already be posted by this time. Uh, so, for Keeper of the Movies, the next four videos will be, first of all, coming out uh, tomorrow for you guys, Saturday. Um, what date is that? Let us see. Handy calendar, what do you say? Saturday the 16th. Um... I will be releasing a my first ever song-related video on Keeper of the Movies. And I only do it because it's songs from a movie. I will be ranking every song from Encanto. Uh, and then I will be doing uh, the Dragon Prince Season 3 Episode 1 review. Dragon Prince Season 3 Episode 2 review. Dragon Prince Season 3 Episode 3 review are the next four videos. Uh, or next four weeks worth of videos. Um, as for Keeper of the Games, um, I recently uh, completed my Portal 2 playthrough and posted that, and posted my last um, Super Mario Odyssey video that I have filmed. I don't have any other ones filmed yet, but I plan to film some more soon. Um, and today, I will be releasing, uh, which is two days before the time that you guys will see this, I'll be releasing the first two episodes of Breath of the Wild. So for the next four weeks after that, we'll have Breath of the Wild episode three and four, then five and six, then seven and eight, and then nine and ten. So just a bunch of Breath of the Wild content for the next four weeks. So yeah, that is that. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you like the idea of me playing Breath of the Wild in the background of these videos. I haven't done it yet, but I plan to do one or two with that in the future, and I would love to hear you guys' thoughts. I don't get very many comments, and uh, I would like to hear from you guys, because it's nice to know what people are thinking. <laughs> but anyways, that is all I have for today, even if you don't like it. 
just tell me in a decently not rude way. Because um, I do have a couple rules for my comments. No hate speech or extreme rudeness, no swearing, and uh, no links. I have found a way to ban links, which is good, but yeah, that's that. Uh, and also no spam. Anyways, uh, that is all I have for today, so yeah. Let me know what you think of that format. I will see you guys next time.